So Victoria, welcome. Thank you. And, and thank you so much for hanging out with us. It okay. is like, pe people are winding down and you're here with us, so we're all really honored. And everyone in here is a fan and we're all pretending to be cool, but <laughs> deep down inside, we're all screaming. So we have this thing at Salt where we, we call it checking in. Okay. Right? And I said to you off air that I don't want you to know what it is before we go on air. Yeah. Because I want it to be honest, raw, authentic. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll check in first. Okay. All right? To give you an, an example. Yeah. So checking in basically talks about how you're arriving. Okay. Right? So how, how are you arriving? Like in this moment, in this space, in this time. So mm -hmm. I'll say how I'm arriving. Yeah. Cool. So I am arriving... Quite frankly, a little tired. Yeah, I can uh, get I'm, that. I'm, I'm like at my honest self, I'm very tired. It's been a long year. Mm. I think everyone feels that. Mm. Uh, but I also have a lot on my mind. Mm. I've got a to-do list which I haven't finished. Mm. So I'm a bit frustrated by that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also anxious because I want to make sure I do this right. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, I'm also excited because I think you know, the more people that get to see this, hopefully will get inspired. So I'm a mixed bag today, which isn't always a good thing. And, and I hope I have enough energy for the moment. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm on it. Okay. All right. right. Nice. Right. That's, that's as honest as it, as it gets. Okay. Um, so how are you so around? How am I checking in? Yeah, okay. how are you checking in? So I think in the moment, I am very, I'm, I enjoy being around people and I live on my own. I'm always by myself, pretty much, especially because of this whole pandemic. Right. So just being around people for me is like bliss because right. I'm a people's person. So in the moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's exciting. I love it. Um, outside of the moment, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. I just want to go and watch TV, watch Married to Medicine and just relax, to right. be honest. Right. But then I know that I've got 101 emails to do and yeah. So it's stressful, um, especially this time, similarly tired. Um, but yeah, right now, happy. Outside of filming, I'm probably gonna be like, oh my gosh, I just wanna go back to bed and watch TV. But I've got to send emails and do 101 other things, so yeah and pay people's bills, because that's what yes. boss ladies do, they pay yeah. people's bills. Yeah. Mad. <laughs> well, listen, um, let, let's jump into it. And thank you for being honest. I really, really appreciate that. Let, let's jump into it. Um, you know, firstly, congrats. We've got the goods here, which I'm so excited to taste. Thank you. Congrats on, on, on Sunmo Snacks. And not just that, I think you've personally built an incredible brand with some of the stuff you've done mm. in addition to this. What does that mean to you personally? Mm. Um, it means a lot. It means a lot because I remember the times when it was just a dream. Um, sometimes I get caught up. I don't, I don't celebrate myself enough or I don't celebrate our achievements enough. In the moments, it's like, especially when you win, you think, oh my gosh, you're going you're gonna to just be happy. You've, you've gone for that Sainsbury's listing and then you've got it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the greatest time. But that's when the work begins. So you've got maybe 10 seconds of getting the email to be like, oh my gosh, yes. And then you're like, okay, we need to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like the highs are very much great, but they also mean you need to work some more. So they're kind of like, oh, celebration, then you've got to do a lot more work. So yeah, it's, it's uh, I would say, but not bittersweet feeling, but it's just, you, you never can rest on your kind of, you're always having to grow, you're always having to, you can never rest on what you did before, you have to do more um, when you achieve more, so yeah. What, like, what happens, I'm just curious, like when you walk into Selfridges, for example, yeah. like, do you just walk up to the counter and just grab a snack and walk out? Like, <laughs> if only. Is that how it works? No. Or do I you mean, have to go pay at the till oh, as well? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I have to go and pay. So then, um, <laughs> I think when I would go into Selfridges, most of the time, I would try and, the first time I went in, when we first got listed, I told them I was the brand owner. And they were like, oh my gosh, wow. Um, and that's how we got our full-time listed wow. because it was only meant to be for six weeks. Now yeah. we've been there for like two years. Wow. It's a long time. Um, but I told them, you know, this is my brand. Um, I told them about, about what we do. And, and she was like, oh my gosh, wow. Okay, you're going by the till, which is essentially your full-time in wow. the store. 
So that was amazing. But now when I go in, I kind of go in as like a secret shopper. I'm like, oh yeah, have you got, yeah, oh yeah, these, I love them. Really? Yeah, <laughs> like, really? um, and sometimes when I'm with a friend or something, and my friend might be like, oh, this is her brand. They're like, really? One time I went to Whole Foods, and um, Whole Foods are lovely. Nice. So I went into Whole Foods and I was buying a lot because um, I went, had an event. So I was nice. buying a lot of crisps, of our plantain crisps. Yeah. And then he was like, you're buying a lot. You really like them? I was like, yeah, it's my brand. He was like, you what? And then he's made an announcement to all the other cashiers. This is the owner of the oh, brand. Amazing. And I was just like, oh, it, it touches your heart. It does. Um, but yeah, I have to pay. And I know that the money's going to come back. So I'm, happy, <laughs> I'm happy to pay. 100%. Yeah. I, I, I'm, you know, very aware that this is the shiny bit, right? The cool mm. bit where you're walking into stores, mm. you look at your product, it's on there. Other people are getting it. It's amazing. But let's dial it back. Let's start from, you know, whatever the beginning means for you. Mm. Uh, you're at home with your family. You're in Dalston, I believe. Yeah. Let, let's just talk about that journey. Mm -hmm. the, the before Sunmo, before Victoria's got this amazing brand. Yeah. Just walk us through that journey. Yes. Yeah, so I grew up in, in Dalston, in Hackney. Um, I grew up very much single parent household from the age of like four, going out on my own. I remember there was an adventure playground at, um, just around the corner from my house. And you had to be five to go there on your own. But I just, my mum was busy, my mum was working. So I needed something to do. So I would go there. They knew I wasn't five, but I'll sign my age as five. Like I'll always go there like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna get in um, after school and stuff or whatever I was in reception. Um, and yeah, it was very, I grew up very quickly. So I needed to make my own food. I needed to go out on my own um, and grew up in a gang ridden area. Now Dalston is like cool and hip, but back in the day it was very rough. It was very rough. Um, but I always, I, at the time I looked up to people like Alan Sugar. Um, and even though I studied, I did well at school. Um, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Wow. Um, so when, when I look back, to be honest, it was there weren't examples of entrepreneurship. Wow. It was just my mum was a teacher, maths teacher, which was a good example. But it made me not want to be a teacher because right. she would be out of the house before we wake up. She's back in the house off like later than us, and I'm just like, I don't want to be a teacher. That was like yeah. my first never doing that ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, we used to mark her books, her maths books, so that made me really good at maths. <laughs> um, so I think I've always had a passion for, for finance, which is really good for business as well, for accounting and stuff and mathematics. So that's really helped me. Um, and then I've, I just, I don't know where my instinct for business came from, but I've always kind of wanted to do business as well. So I want to just write on that theme of you growing up quite quickly being mm. exposed to maths, accounting, and understanding that world mm. early on. Then you go on to, to study, you know, we're fast forwarding here. Talk to me about that experience of you studying, mm. but also you just didn't, you balanced a lot of responsibilities. I remember on a, we were on a virtual call, yeah. and I just caught a snippet of your story, and I was blown away. Just bring us into the reality of that. You've mm. got the degree, or whatever it's called, yeah. yeah. But what does the grind look like? Yeah. The grind was a big grind. Um, like I said, I was always passionate about entrepreneurship, but at the same time, um, you know, I wanted to get a degree. Mum wasn't, as I'm Nigerian, but mum wasn't a traditional Nigerian mother who was like, you have to go and study. She's got two degrees. She's got one in maths and then petroleum engineering, but she wasn't big on me going to university. So she was just like, do you know what? University to her was a bit worthless. But I decided to go anyway. Um, and at the time, my mum was really struggling. She stopped working as a teacher. Um, so for the most part, like, I was working as a healthcare assistant whilst I was studying. Wow. Um, and also doing like entrepreneurial stuff on the side as wow. well. Um, and I, I would say it was, it, it was difficult because you are trying to, I was trying to go into finance finding my feet with entrepreneurship, um, trying to learn and then also study at the same time. Wow. Um, and I remember there was times where, I mean, thank goodness I was working my job because 
bailiffs would come to my mum's house. Obviously, I was at my mum's at the time. Um, and because I was able to save money, mm. I would help her pay the bills and stuff like wow. that. So it got a lot. Um, and there was always that feeling of... I always felt different to other students who kind of could go back to their parents' house and their parents would support them and stuff like that. It was more, I was the responsible one mm. and I had to work and I would sometimes go to shifts um, just during the day, um, have a lecture at 2 p.m. Then, you know, you have your networking events, like the Goldman Sachs yeah. coffee mornings and stuff yeah. like that. And I'll make sure I'm present. Um, so I'll maybe go to a coffee morning at 9 a.m., go to work from maybe 10.30 to 2, go to my lecture at 2. Wow. So it was, a, it was a lot to juggle, it was... Um, and I think my takeaways from doing all of that were not having as much of a social life, wow. one, but then also just the, I feel like I had a lot more drive in university days than I do, than I probably do now. Like I was, I was, wow. I used my time very effectively. So if I'm going to Goldman Sachs, everyone in the room's going to speak to me and I'm going to make sure they know who I am. Wow. Um, and that's what my friends just knew about me. I was the person who I would make the most of every opportunity I got. Wow. Um, so it, it's bittersweet in that, you know, when you're, go, when you're like pressed and you've got so much going on, you can either be like full, full throttle or you can kind of just be burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, but those times I was like, go, 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 go. Anything I need to achieve, I'm going to do it. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, but at the same time, it does, it's not, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable to be like that. And I had a lot of burnout by the end of the year or, or mid-year when I was doing all of that. But you sat here, right? So it's like yeah. words. You know, I'm, not, I'm not recommending people burn out. Yeah. But what I think what I'm trying to emphasize very badly, clearly, no, is, no, no. is like, you know, you were strong like, and you mm. are strong because it's the fire, whatever that experience was, mm. has produced this person in front of me today. It's true, um, it's true. I, I think that, I mean, I wouldn't recommend, it's hard, you know, that type of situation is hard. You don't want to have to kind of be a parent to your parent, essentially, but at the same time, so many people are in that position. Right. And if and when I got my own house, it was a lot easier. But, you know, if you're living with your mother, um, you have to kind of be there for her. Yeah. And even if you're not living with her, you know, you don't want to see your mum struggling. Oh, cool. um, but honestly, the burnout is real. Like, sometimes I look at myself, I'm like, I just feel like... You just feel like you can't do anything when you're burnt yeah. out. Like, yeah. you, you'll go maybe eight months of the year, just go, 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 go. Then when it gets to the last couple of months, it's like, who was that person? Like, right. you don't even recognise that person. Right. You don't think you can talk or network with anyone because you're so um, overwhelmed right. and you've worked so hard that your body's kind of telling you, yeah, I've had enough. Right. Um, I tend to do that quite a lot, even up until today, which is really bad. But I think a balance is better. Right. And if I could do anything better for my children, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't have them work that type of situation. Right. right. Cre create a better kind of platform for them. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so let's kind of talk about the reality of... Because some of snacks came, you know, after you... I suppose started your career mm. you weren't always in what we call big language fmcg or consumer yeah. goods in other words you know everything you consume or drink yeah uh you didn't start with sunmo you you actually started you mentioned it finance yeah in the world of finance yeah but there's a reality there in that both in the world of finance and in consumer goods there are very few black people mm. um at like you know decision making uh, levels, mm -hmm. if that's the way we want to uh, put it. And at the same time, there are very few black women yeah. at those decision-making levels. Absolutely. Just talk to me about that experience and how you're navigating that and how you navigated that in the past. Yeah, it was, it, it is hard. Um, it is hard. I find it easier now that you've got some, like, things that you can say to people. Right. You know, when I speak to Sainsbury's now, they're very much like, oh, you're 
our brand, right, you know, right. they're behind us. Um, but it, there is that barrier. I remember starting off with, with Samo, it was like, um, I'll speak to designers. I was quite fortunate. I found two investors, angel investors, yeah. to invest um, from where I was working in finance. Um, but I'll speak to designers and I'll be like, okay, we want it like this, this and this. And it'll be like in one ear, out the other. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. We're like, well, we want to be in Sainsbury's in within the next year. They're like, oh yeah, right. You can't do that. And I'm like, okay, we're paying you. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just do what I want. I'm like, okay, can you have? I love that honesty, yo. <laughs> you know, I am paying you, which That's is what it is. It's so it's so difficult. Um, and it's like I'll say things like, okay, I need you to put the picture of the product on the packaging because that's what Sainsbury's need. And they're like, okay, yeah, when you get to Sainsbury's, we'll do that. But right now, we're going to do this. I'm like, could you just do it? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, and I found it difficult. And I didn't initially think it was a race thing or because mm. I'm a woman or anything like that. But it will be, because my initial investors, one is a white female, um, and she's a bit older than me, then the other is like a black male. Um, I would say something and it'll be like, oh, Vicky, she's just so young. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Yeah. Well, obviously I've researched this because it's something I'm passionate about. So before I jumped in, I did a lot of research. Um, and, you know, not just research, but actually experience. I've sold at like trade shows and um, markets and things like that. Um, and then, um, yeah, so then, but when she would say it and I'll be like, okay, can you let them know that we need to do this? They'll be like, yeah, sure, it makes sense. I'm just like, okay, this is annoying. Right, right. It's I'm repeating annoying. myself all the time. Yeah, having to repeat yourself and just being underestimated or, yeah. you know, just, yeah, downplayed. And it, it does get frustrating. And at the beginning of the business, it was things like, okay, I need us, we need to go online. You're, you're fighting against your team sometimes. Right. And then it's like next year or so, it's like, okay, let's rush to do this mm -hmm. when I already told us to do it before. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it was frustrating a lot. Now I'm happy that I'm kind of over that hump because it's kind of like, if I come to someone for to ask for help or something, they're kind of like, okay, she's she's obviously started this brand and we see the brand yeah. already and we, we it's a reputable name now, yeah. relatively. So it's just, it's easier to get things done, but before it was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. And, and how do you overcome that? You know, um, how does one navigate that? Do you, mm. do you just keep repeating yourself? Is there yeah. a formula? What, what does one do uh, from a young black man or a young black mm. woman trying to break into the, you know, I'm trying to get Michael snacks on, you know, into say, how, how, does, how do I navigate that? You just have to repeat yourself. Honestly, you have to be so convicted in wow. what you need to do and map it out, plan it out. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of repetition. It's very frustrating, personally. And, you know, I don't think we sometimes see the mental side of things. Mm. You know, being told that your ideas that you've planned and it can get very frustrating and mentally it's quite annoying or, I don't know, damaging. Mm. Um, but yeah, it takes a lot of repetition, you know, I, oh my gosh, the amount of times I've been like, okay, we need to do this, we need to do this this way, this is the plan, this is what's going to happen this day, um, and it's like, oh, whatever, then when it gets to the last minute, it's like, okay, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this, yeah. and it's like, okay, oh yeah, that's a great idea, then finally come on board, breakthrough, yeah. final break, breakthrough, it's very frustrating, um, but I find, we've been quite fortunate, every store that we've spoken to has been like, yeah, we wow. we want you um, so I find that the stores are a lot better than like right. <laughs> the people that I work with I'm just right. like they get it and like what's going on That's um, but yeah <laughs> so, so let's I mean you know it could be argued and I think it would be a fair argument to make that you you know you've paved the way for young uh, black owned brands um or just black owned brands in general, right? To come mm. through and, and I think there's a lot more recognition that if the product is good, mm. if the idea is amazing, if the marketing's on point, mm. people will buy it. Yeah. Like I don't walk into Sainsbury's thinking, no, I just want an, a good product, right? Mm -hmm. And it tastes great. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the conversations that I know, you know, we, 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 we know some other black founders mm. 
Mm. And I'm sure you're speaking in whatever, whether it's a WhatsApp group or a phone mm. call. Mm. What are some of the conversations that you're having with your peers about how we can make it easier for other people to mm. come through? Yeah. Are those conversations happening? I feel like with Salt, the conversation's happening a lot more. Yeah. Um, and I think we should have more of the conversation, especially in the food, food market. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we don't. We don't really speak about bringing others in. But from my experience, yeah. when I was working in finance, like I was, I was a junior in the team. I wasn't, I wasn't like up there finance girl. Do you know what I mean? I'm like working on projects and starting new things and, and what have you. Um, so there was a lot of food. Well, there was one in particular um, food founder, um, black woman. Um, her name's Eve fan of Beps and I saw her story online and that was the only reason I was motivated to do wow. mine honestly like I was Does doing know that? I think I've told her oh, yeah amazing. so I speak to her personally um I've told her um but genuinely I understand when they say if you can't see it, you can't be it wow. because I had Sunmo and I think I had investment at the time but it was that next stage of we need to get a manufacturer we need to mm. get into stores mm. And it was just like, will they take me seriously? Wow. As a young, I'm having all of these struggles with simply with our designers and stuff like that. Well, the, what do I need to say? Like, do I need to start talking like them? Is there a lingo? Is there, right. do you know what I mean? Is yeah. there an a etiquette behind yeah, 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 yeah. contacting them yeah. and things like that? I've got my finance background, but will this still translate into food? Mm. Um, and just reading about how she got investment and how she got a manufacturer and how she got into stores, I was just like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it too. Amen. And that was just what it took for me to send those emails and to attend those, you know, speak to a manufacturer, get the manufacturer mm. on board, get the investors locked in, get the um, stores locked in as well. And yeah, I think just that I, so I understand that just people seeing someone that looks like them do it can be that motivation. Mm -hmm. But I think there should be other things that we do as well. Um, shout out to, to Eve. motivate. Yeah, shout out to her. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to her for sure. So, so let's look back. And I know, you know, we, we don't have too far back to look back, but let's look back anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, two stages. Stage one, let's pretend you've gone back in time and you are meeting or you're experiencing young Victoria mm. and she's going through whether it's uni or child, what advice would you give her then? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I'll probably tell her to um, aim high. Right. Aim high, because I think the times when I have kind of been like, let me go the easy route, have been times where I go back and then I aim high. I'm like, oh, okay, I should have just done this first. Like, it just it just wastes time. Wow. Rather than, like, when we started with Sunmo, for example, I had a, a goal of going from Selfridges to Whole Foods Market to Sainsbury's. It was literally mapped out. Mm -hmm. I wrote it down on our business plan, and that's exactly how we went. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I spoke to others, they would say, how is, Sainz how is Selfridges your first store? Like, wouldn't you need to go to your, you know, everyday kind of stores mm. first and stuff like that? But then you get into this cycle of it just, it's hard to just go from one store to another to another that doesn't have a name behind it. We were doing market stores and stuff like that. Um, and I think it was good for market research, but staying on there for too long is just, sometimes it's a waste of time. Right. And you need to just go to the big guys. So I would just tell my future self, don't think that anything's too big. Amazing. So sometimes if it comes to even raising investment, one person might tell you, you can't raise a million pounds. That's, that's a ridiculous number. Um, but you've done your numbers and you're like, I need a million pounds. <laughs> go and raise a million pounds. Like never think that something's too much. Right. Um, and just go for exactly what you need. And, you know, you need to be in Sainsbury's, go and speak to Sainsbury's, you know. Because sometimes it's just that doing it, mm that you aren't doing because you're afraid or you think it's too much or what have you. So I'll just tell her just to keep on aiming high. And, and, and part B is actually fascinating because you know there's always that advice that you're, you, you know right now intuitively you need to give yourself 
Mm-hmm. What, what advice would you give yourself right now right if you now. were sat here looking at yourself? Oh, um, advice. I think I would intuitively take a break. Right. <laughs> intuitively, I would tell myself to right. take a break. Yeah. But there's so many things that I'm like, because you know, sometimes you work, 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 and then you burn out and Mm. then something happens and you're like, there was no point of me even doing that work. I should have just rested. And I feel, but you only, it's only hindsight that you notice at that time where you knew you was tired and you needed to rest. There was no point of you. It wasn't, you know, you was just, running around mm, mm. But there's nothing <laughs> chasing to show your tail it. exactly right. Right. and it's only after the fact that you're like okay I could have just rested in that time mm. um, but in the moment you feel like oh what if I miss out on this what if I miss out on that I think I'm in that period right now and either I'm going to break, take a break yeah. and be like that was good and I'm recharged mm. or I'm going to keep on working and I'm going to be like there was no point of me working so hard back then right. Um, so yeah, I think I would just tell myself to take a break, to be honest. So Victoria, this is Victoria, <laughs> speaking to Victoria, take a break. Watch that series on Netflix, or whatever you, it is that you like to watch. Um, what, what, let's talk about like the future of the product, you know. Um, where would you like to see this go? I mean, you don't have to give us the full, just mm-hmm. in case competitors are watching, you know. We don't want to give away the secrets, mm. but... But like, let's dream a little bit, you know, where, where do you want to see this go with, yeah. with Sunmo? I imagine it's the beginning of something, but yeah. I'm sure that business plan is crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so with Sunmo, we've got our plantain crisp right now. We've got our sweet potato puffs. Um, and we are now speaking with some US distributors. Um, the US is huge. So us being with our snacks in the US will be amazing. Um, So yeah, we're really trying to scale up our US sales. Um, More than that, I I like to do things that I'm really passionate about. So I'm very passionate about making a change. Mm. Um, So what I see cinema being is moving more into the food technology side of things. Um, And in places such as Africa or places in America where um, you can't get certain groceries. Wow. So you can't get groceries because you can't get fresh groceries just because the system is because of traffic. Mm. People can't go out to the grocery store that often. Wow. It's crazy. Um, well, we're looking to do a food delivery type app wow. um, that enables us to deliver groceries Um for, for people like that. Are you allowed to say all this stuff? This is huge. It is big. Yeah, it well, is are you big. allowed to just say this? Do you know what? I think... <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, think, I think my main thing is, to be honest, and unless you have to patent the idea, yeah, yeah, yeah. which with this, it's not really right. a patentable. So I'm happy to say it. Only because I think there's no point of hoarding your ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, someone can listen to this and be like, do you know what? That's a great idea. Yeah. I want to work with you on no. this. Or they might be like, oh, I want to do it. But I don't think anyone can do it the way you would do it. Because yeah. in your, um, whenever you have a vision for something, you intricately know kind of exactly how you want to execute it. Mm. I don't think anyone can really do it as you would personally yeah. do it yourself. So I'm never like scared to kind of express my ideas, That's to cool. be honest. Um, cool. And especially when they're in works already, I'm kind of like, okay, well. It sounds, it sounds so exciting. Well, look, Thank if you've got an you. opening for like a, a taster, yeah. I just want to be that guy. Uh, I'd yeah. be the best taster in the world. <laughs> just FYI, I'll send you my CV. Um, that was a joke, but also not. Um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to wrap this bit up, but we, we do a little thing. Um, mm-hmm. Quick fire, right? Mm-hmm. The rules are simple. Mm-hmm. It's so simple. Okay. Right? Basically, you have to pick one or... Give us a short sentence in response, so you can't take a long time okay. to, to respond to this, okay? okay. Um, are you ready? Yeah. I'm just being very professional right now, as you can see, mm. and pulling out my notes. Great. Right, so, morning person or night? Morning person. Stretch, uh, strength or cardio? Cardio. Squat or deadlift? Squat. Apple or Android? Apple. Kanye West or Drake? Oh, <laughs> Drake. Uh, Wizkid or Burner Boy? Wizkid. 
<laughs> Crime or R&B? R&B. Well, when it comes to jollof, Nigerian or Ghanaian? Oh, Nigerian. Come oh. on. I don't want to be horrible, though. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Three solid meals a day or as and when? As and when. As and when. The beach or countryside? The beach. <laughs> Idris Elba or Mahershala Ali? I don't know who the second person is. <laughs> So, so Idris. Idris. All right. Love Island or Married at First Sight? Love Island. L Lagos or London? Lagos. Crypto or cash? Ooh, cash. <laughs> I should probably know more about crypto. <laughs> Labor or Tory? I'm kidding. You don't have to answer that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not answering that one. I'm not answering that one. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, um, that's so funny. Uh, I, I want to see how everyone else reacts to that one. Um, but I suppose, look, Victoria, thank you so much for, for just coming you. through. Really appreciate having you here, being a good sport, just taking time to talk to us. Mm -hmm. um, there are a ton of young people who are going to watch this. Mm -hmm. what, what, what should young people, black young people, looking to make something of their lives and mm -hmm. change their families? Life? I'm sure you've changed your, your mum's life. and your, mm -hmm. you, There's some family members who've seen you and gone, can I hold? Can I hold a little something? Or, <laughs> or you know what I mean? You always get that yeah. family was like, "Hey man, I change your diaper." It's like, bro, I don't know. I'm but what what should young people trying mm. to make something of their lives do? What should they be thinking about? Yeah, I think um, there's a key thing that my secondary school teacher used to always tell me, and it haunts me a little bit. But she always would say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Right. And it's so true. I think just take that time out to plan. Those moments are key. Like if you take a couple of weeks to plan your year, your whole year will change. Like we, I launched Sunmo in such a short amount of time. We launched into Selfridges within the first, we launched in March June, July, March, April, May, June. So like three months and then we launched straight into Whole Foods and we launched into Sainsbury's within like two years or so, which is very quick growth. Um, but when I tell you I mapped out every single day and that was the most beneficial thing and it's enjoyable, it's, it's fulfilling. You are following a map, but at the same time, you sometimes, it's like taking, going on a journey. If you don't have the sat nav and you don't know where you're going, Part way through the journey, you're going to get lost. It's going to take you longer to get there. But if you just plan and you just got the map out, then it's so smoother. It's so much smoother. Um, so I would say plan and plan the biggest things. Like plan. We I wrote down things like speak to Sainsbury's, launch in Sainsbury's, speak to you know, yeah. and it was just based on what others have done. Right. So, you know, they spoke to Sainsbury's in, I'll read articles, they spoke to Sainsbury's in March and then they got into Sainsbury's next year or what, what have you, like just their, mm. their um, listing periods or what have you. And I'll be like, okay, we're going to speak to them then for this listing period and then we're going to get into them for this time and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, just plan. Plan outside of your wildest dreams. You've got nothing to lose. Mm. I know how it is when you just feel maybe stuck or you feel that it's too big for you to achieve, but mm. never think that's, never think that something's too big. Like, I, it's crazy, but, you know, the richest people in this world are just men and mm. women. Right. You know, Oprah's a woman, like mm. you mm. are, mm. like I am. You can be like Oprah. You can be like Elon Musk. It's crazy, and it's it's so outlandish to say, but I genuinely feel as so though people just need to believe in themselves and just plan it out. You know, you believe in yourself, and then you put in the action to achieve it, and you can definitely do it. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that to any young person listening. Like, go for what you need to go for, Amazing. what you feel to go for. You know, it's beyond just you wanting to do it, but it's also your purpose and it fulfills you. So make sure that you fulfill your purpose and yeah, get out of what you can in this life and give back what you can in this life as well. Amazing. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you for, Thank you for having it's me. It's now time for you to go home and Netflix. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna